Yeah, I think uh, Roshan is there. Roshan. Okay, today I am basically touching upon fracture management in general and amputations. Okay, two topics together. Okay, hanging cast. Hanging cast. What is hanging cast? Or where is hanging cast used? Femur fracture, humerus fracture, radius fracture, tibia fracture, or fibula fracture. Can anybody want to take a chance? Am I audible? Umesh? You are audible. You are audible. Okay, I am not getting any response. I think students are uh, unfamiliar. Anyway, yeah. I will uh, go ahead. Okay, see, hanging cast, I will answer this question for you. It is used in management of humerus fracture. It is used in humerus fracture. I will tell you what is a hanging cast. Then you will understand. Okay. See, these are the different types of casts what you use in humerus fracture. One thing you understand, humerus fracture is amenable for uh, conservative management. And there is one standard saying where the fracture humerus, if two ends are left in the room, where no orthopedic surgeon enters, it will unite. That goes to say, most of the non-union of humerus fracture is because of surgical intervention. It is though little self-critical, please remember humerus fracture gives excellent result in conservative management. So how do you do conservative management? How do you do conservative? One thing you remember, conservative management is application of P P O P. P O P is plaster of Paris. I'll come to the chemical content or constituent of plaster of Paris later. But for now, you remember P O P is plaster of Paris. Okay. So plaster of Paris application has various uses. One is temporary immobilization of the fracture and definitive management of the fracture. I will just show you some pictures of the cast types of cast used for humerus fracture this is hanging cast please remember this okay look at this here the wrist and the hand is left free it is not above elbow cast above elbow means here from uh, from above the elbow to if the wrist is included, if the cast is still here, it is long arm cast or above elbow cast. Please remember and concentrate. Okay. Here it is just short of the wrist. Here the wrist is free. And here is a fracture. Just two inches above the fracture is the cast ends. Okay, this is hanging cast. Please remember this is hanging cast. And look at this. This is also a kind of POP cast application, but here the elbow is left free. The patient can move the elbow. Flexion and extension of the elbow is permitted. And even the shoulder is allowed to move. Only the fracture is immobilized. So the brace means, the cast brace means the adjacent joints are not immobilized or rather allowed to move or mobilized. So that is cast brace. And what is this U slab? You remember it looks like a U. It looks like a U. That is called as U slab. I will explain what is the difference between slab and cast in subsequent slides. Okay. 
there is much of literature available here uh, anyway we will not focus on that okay so you please remember anyway you might have been very uh, familiar with the kind of casts either in your general ward i mean ward postings look at this short arm cast i will come to the type of the cast only in now right now i'll explain you to the to you the different types of cast supply will not go into the indications for different types of cast application remember short arm is below the elbow long arm is above the elbow short arm cast on long arm cast okay okay see again arm cylinder or it is hanging cast you remember here the wrist is left free here the wrist is not left free okay so remember short arm cast long arm cast arm cylinder i'll explain to you that later short leg cast similarly below here it was below elbow here it is below knee short leg cast short arm cast above elbow is long arm cast above knee is a long leg cast simple the words are same self explanatory but you will have to remember that and remember this this is a typical cast this is a cylinder this is a cylinder cylinder cast is used for especially for patella fractures long leg cast can be used for the ankle injury uh, the tibia fibula fracture or simple fibula fracture either upper end tibia middle tibia what is important between the difference between one and two is here the foot is left free here foot is not left free so why foot is left free is even though the foot moves there is no affection of movement of patella fracture hence it is used in cylinder cylinder cast is used in fracture patella or or in ligament injuries ligament injuries mcl lcl acl or pcl injuries okay remember here all ligament injuries and fracture patella you use your cylinder cast okay something about i will explain you about the spica spica simple thing to remember and they have mentioned in some books spica means spine and cast this is not actually what it means it is only to remember they have made a some kind of mnemonic here the lumbar spine is included and the leg is included similarly if the spine is included and the arm is included it is shoulder spica it is shoulder spica here it is hip is included this is hip spica so what are the different types here only one leg is in, included it is single leg spica or unilateral spica here one leg is included and the above knee it is included it is one and half spica okay here both the limbs are included completely in the cast with the spine it is double spica okay remember in hip fracture it is always single spica in dysplastic hip or congenital dislocation of the hip it is double spica just to give you a simple example detailed examination detailed uh, details of this can be further seen in subsequent slides okay okay agnes hunt okay agnes hunt traction agnes hunt traction is used in can anybody try uh answering this question if you have come across in previous paper papers or if you read here it will be welcoming if they are interacting on and off never mind if you are wrong okay it will be interesting if you are interacting regularly okay agnes hunt traction 
remember it is used in flexion deformity of the hip flexion deformity of the hip means where extension is not possible flexion deformity of the hip is seen in tuberculosis of the hip more commonly more commonly in tuberculosis so after the patient is healed with the tuberculosis the limb is still kept in flexion you want to correct it is corrected by agnes hunt traction i'll give some explanation about the different type of the traction subsequently okay right just remember bryant's traction or gallows traction bryant's traction or gallows traction what you remember is it is used in less than 2 years children less than 10 kg of weight of the child and in fracture femur please remember this so a child is placed on the pediatric cot and there is something called as balkan beam you please remember special uh, cots for fracture management come with balkan beams you might get some question somewhere i am not sure but remember it is balkan beams means there will be overhead beams where you can hang the rope coming from the cast so these uh, legs are hanging from the roof uh, from the ceiling of the bed for fracture shaft femur bryant traction or gallows traction is used in fracture shaft femur management in children with less than 2 years remember that similarly dunlop traction dunlop traction is is used for supracondylar fractures okay please remember supracondylar fracture means the fracture there is a fracture of the humerus just above the uh, lower end of humerus so what they do they'll put a pin here and pulleys with a rope hanging like this and the skin traction is pulled up like that so please remember dunlop traction dunlop traction is used in supracondylar fracture supracondylar fracture you have to make some mnemonics or please remember this visualize the picture then you will remember visualize the picture or make some mnemonics then only you will remember otherwise you will have to read repeatedly okay so this is what i was talking of agnes hunt agnes hunt traction where this part of the leg is in flexion deformity so i want to correct this means gradually the weight applied here the pillows are removed of course these are not being used nowadays this is out of interest because they appear frequently in the mcqs so don't get uh, worried about looking at so many pictures this is only to help you to remember okay see bryant traction we have already explained bryants bryants just like and they are small in in small children you can remember like this bryants and is small small children bryants traction in small children for fracture femur okay right remember this bucks traction bucks traction is again very very commonly if you are intern or if you are finally a student having attended clinical uh, posting you will see this very common in this ward simple skin traction it is bucks traction it is used in fracture neck of the femur or intertrochanter fractures bucks traction very easy to remember okay brian you are done with brands and done with bucks traction see there is something called as russell traction please remember look at the pictures very very carefully everything seems to be similar here leg is pulled by a rope after there is a creep and is applied here also it is same okay but look at this 
there is something supporting the thigh there is something supporting the thigh which is not there okay so box traction and russell traction are similar but here the thigh is supported by a sling whatever sling is like hammock you might have slept or used hammock in the beach side and hanging so sling is something which helps in hanging of the leg okay so if there is a sling it is russell traction if there is no sling it is box traction you are done with brian's box and russell traction so other uh, are not so important i will skip this so that you will not get confused Okay, I'm sorry about that. My battery is running low. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. See, Russell's traction. I have explained this. Russell's traction is used in intertrochanter fracture, fracture shaft femur, low backache, and flexion deformity of the hip. So, what I had explained in Russell's traction and Buck's traction. it is used in intertrochanteric fractures which of the following is false about pop please remember pop is plaster of paris which of the following is false so leg cast is mold mold in 48 to 60 hours means 4 to 5 days hot water used takes more time to mold then pop should be dipped vertically rather than horizontally remember pop bandages remember a role of pop bandage whether you have to dip it vertically or horizontally compartment syndrome is immediate complication okay so we'll go one by one compartment syndrome yes it is a complication if you apply a tight cast there is a vascular impairment and you will get compartment syndrome should pop should be dipped vertically yes no doubt about that next comes hot water takes more time to mold no hot water increases it reduces the time of setting please remember if you are in a busy opd you want you are applying too many casts use hot water so that you will uh, apply many uh, molding will be quick and you can apply more cast you want to delay the setting of the cast use a cold water hot water because it increases the speed of setting of calcium sulfate okay so and the cast takes 48 or uh, 4 to 5 days is correct so the answer is hot water takes more time to mold no hot water is helpful in quick setting of the cast so okay which splint is used in the management of fracture shaft of the femur which splint which splint or traction okay remember this Split Russell traction, gallows, box, branch traction. Definitely, the answer is branch. I told you, fracture shaft man femur in children is managed by branch traction. See, remember, this is what I was mentioning. Box is simple bandage is applied to the leg and pulled over the pulley where weight is applied. Russell's means you apply a separate sling over the thigh and pull like this. Please remember that is the difference between box and the Russell's traction. 
Rasus is long board, so your means there is an additional support. Bucks is there is no support. Small word, simple traction. Long word, there is additional supplement. Dunlop traction. Dunlop traction. Remember? Dunlop traction. You remember? So Dunlop fraction is used as I said. It is in supracondylar fracture humerus. So here they have mentioned only about the humerus fracture, radius, femur and tibia. The answer is humerus fracture. Roshan is not attending the class today. Is the Roshan there? Okay. Anyway, I am familiar with only Roshan and so I keep calling. No hard feeling for the rest of the students. Okay. So all are true regarding application of POP cast, except, remember, read the question carefully. Putting POP roll in warm water hastens the setting time, correct? Yes, as I told you, warm water hastens the setting time. It is anhydrous calcium phosphate, Carefully applied in presence of the swelling, yes, you have to put a lot of padding if there is swelling. And gangrene is known complication of the tight plaster cast, yes. Tight plaster cast, compartment syndrome, if not addressed immediately, it will definitely go for a catastrophic complication, that is gangrene. So, all are true, except, except it is not anhydrous, it is hemihydrate, hemihydrate, it is with a half molecule of H2O, I will come to the chemical formula in a later slides, okay, so it is not anhydrous, it is hemihydrate, yeah, this is the formula wherein when you you put uh, soak in the water, it, it releases the heat. Hence, after the application of the cast, you get a warm feeling. Milwaukee brace. Milwaukee brace. I'll come to the braces subsequently. First, we'll see one or two questions. So, Milwaukee brace is used in congenital kyphosis, Schwerman syndrome, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, or spondylolisthesis. Yes, please remember it is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. I'll tell you why. Most common deformity of a childhood or adolescence is scoliosis. Kyphosis is not so common in children. Congenital kyphosis is not common, but kyphosis is common in older, elderly individuals, because of the osteoporosis, they hunch back. They hunch, the back goes slowly, becomes curved forward. That is hunch back. So, congenital kyphosis, no. Schwerman's disease is a simple self-limiting disease. Spondylolisthesis, it cannot be treated by any brace. So, what is the answer remaining? Adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Idiopathic scoliosis means there is no underlying problem with the muscle or the bone. Remember, neurological, muscular or skeletal cause for deformed curvature of the spine. That is a lateral curvature of the spine. If the spine is like this, if the spine is like this, it should be straight. If it is curved like this, it is lateral curvature is scoliosis. You should know this, lateral curvature is scoliosis. If it is convexity towards the right, it is a right scoliosis. And where it is situated, whether it is thoracic scoliosis, thoracolumbar scoliosis or cervical scoliosis. So if forward bending of the spine, you remember, you, you imagine a posture with a patient with a lot of belly, forward bending or backward bending of the spine. A lord with a huge belly walking with backwards. Lord or well-fed individual. That is lordosis. Lordosis. You remember how the lords or overweight individual walk. That is lordosis. Lateral curvature is scoliosis. 
See, look at this. It is. It looks like a yes, isn't it? It looks like yes. And kyphosis is like this. Kyphosis is forward bending of the spine. So this is what I was mentioning. This is a Milwaukee brace. Nowadays, the surgery. It is. There are indications for surgery for the scoliosis of the spine. Earlier, it was managed conservatively. Remember, this is a Milwaukee brace where you can see a clinical picture. Remember, here there is a padding. Remember, this padding depends where is our scoliosis. Suppose our spine is like this. This padding, this padding is what is shown in this picture. This padding is pressing over the apex of the curve. We call this as the apex of the curve. Apex of the curve. This is the apex of the curve. Okay. This is Milwaukee brace used in adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. You have to mug up. There is no letting away. You have to remember. Okay. Functional cast bracing not used in the fracture of remember this humerus as i said two fra fracture ends of the humerus are left in a room without uh, orthopedic surgeon entering the room it will unite tibia also can be treated conservatively ulna can be treated conservatively so what is remaining is thoracolumbar fractures so true about denham pin Okay, I'll explain you briefly before. Uh, okay, we'll answer this question first. Denham pin. True about the Denham pin is it is used, used in a skeletal traction. It has central threads in uh, threads in the center. It is used in calcaneal traction. All are true about the Denham pin. Okay, remember in uh, okay remember the traction. There are two types of traction. It is skin. It is skin traction and skeletal traction. Skin traction means there is no pins inserted in the bone. Skeletal traction means there is a pin inserted in the bone. What you saw in branch traction is you are just applying tight bandage to the skin and pulling. Here, the problem with skin traction is you cannot apply in the allergic skin and you cannot put heavy weight. Weight can be maximum 2 to 4 kgs. But in skeletal traction, you put a pin in the bone. So, up to 10% of the body weight, 10% of the body weight, you can apply. Where wherever heavy traction is required or heavy load is required, you apply skeletal traction. Okay, please remember. So now when you come, when you know there is a skin traction, there is a skeletal traction. Skeletal traction means you will use different type of pins. So for that, what you remember? Something called as cave wires. Okay, then comes your Steenman pin. Steenman pin. Pin. Then comes your Denham's pin. Then comes your Shan's pin. Don't worry, you will have. Don't have to remember this, but you should know the difference between this. Okay, don't try to remember because if you know the differences. You don't have to remember the names of these pins, okay? Steenman pin is no threads. No threads. There are no threads for that, okay? In Denham's pin, there is central thread, okay? In Shan's pin, there is threads in the end, okay? So, Shan's pin... Steenman pin and Denham's pin. I draw a picture here. A Steenman pin is no threads. A small pin. It is like a, a 
a pin means uh, i don't know it is like a rod if you can understand it is like a rod steel one pin is a it is like a rod it is small nail like this with the sharp one of course it is uniform remember this steenman pin in a denham spin the pin is like this but there are threads in the center in shan spin there are threads at the one end so this is a shan spin it is used in external fixator denham spin is used in calcaneal traction or osteoporotic bone steenman pin no need of threads here hence it is used in young adults steenman pin denham spin with central threads used in calcaneal traction or osteoporosis am i clear yes i hope so okay all of the following are used you for skeletal traction yes i will come to that what i have explained here this is steenman pin yes i already explained yes it is used bowler stirrup we you don't know i will explain that k wire you don't know rush pin you don't know okay so k wire there is very little difference steenman pin is thicker pin k wire is thin one remember this K wire is a thin, steel one pin is thick. So both are used in skeletal traction. Bowler stirrup is if you use a pin here, if you are definitely attended the ward posting, this pin is there. If you see a section from the axial, if you cut the bone, you see there is a bone here. You put a pin like this. Okay, I'll draw you again. There is a bone here. you are seeing a transaction there is a pin so you have to pull this isn't it you have to pull this so what you do there is something called as a u shaped bowler stirrup u shaped bowler stirrup so this bowler stirrup there is a rope tied and there is a weight here okay so what is the use is if there is no stirrup the stirrup is not there means you have to apply threads here and there are two threads instead if you use a u shaped blow bowler stirrup you can use only one weight okay am i clear yes sites of skeletal traction you have to remember this where all you can apply skeletal traction this you remember lower end humerus olecranon that is a dunlop where there is a pin in the olecranon and there is a skin traction for the arm dunlop so it is a lower end of it is olecranon pin it is a distal femur i am sorry i cannot you might not be reading able to read the uh, literature but look focus on the diagram lower end of the humerus it is uh, sorry lower it is olecranon lower end of femur upper end of the tibia it is a calcaneum it is a lower end of tibia these are the common sites for skeletal traction okay good i found this picture for you so as i was mentioning steenman pin is no threads there are no threads denham spin is there are threads in the center to remember this you can see okay so used in the calcaneum and osteoporotic bones contraindication for the skin traction very common sense isn't it if there is dermatitis you will not apply if there is a vascularity which is compromised you will not apply abrasions you will definitely not apply so what is remaining vitiligo vitiligo is a hypopigmentation there is nothing much there is nothing to do with the application of the weight so contraindications of for skin traction are all except 
okay so all these are contraindication only hypopigmentation is not a contraindication so halo pelvic halo pelvic traction remember halo pelvic traction is used for correction of which deformity there is no big deal in the terminology please remember halo pelvic halo means what you see a halo around any uh, great uh, spiritual leaders right? it is like a halo around lord vishnu or anything it is a halo or a halo around the head pelvic so halo pelvic there is a halo means halo is something to do with the skull and pelvis so you put traction from the skull to the pelvis so where it is possible it is possible only in correction of the deformity of the spine pectus carinatum is uh, not definitely correctable spondylosis no coxavara is with the hip so if you want to correct the deformity of the spine in the form of scoliosis where you as i mentioned you use the milwaukee brace similarly you use a halo pelvic traction yes so i told you this, this is the halo around the skull this is the pelvis you apply this rings around the pelvis rings around the skull and these are distracting it is like two people pulling one fellow pulling from here and another fellow pulling and the pelvis gradually you will get the correction this is please remember this is a halo pelvic traction apparatus where it is used for correction of the deformity of the spine okay locking compression plate locking compression plate is commonly indicated in following fracture okay please remember i don't know whether you can answer this but i will explain you okay we'll go from below fracture long bones you remember long bone fractures the commonest thing what they do is kneeling intertrochanteric fractures you know it is dhs or pfn we we'll not don't bother about the long long form transverse or the oblique fracture of the long bone is normal dcp dynamic compression plate so what is remaining periarticular fracture is locking compression plate bone transport bone transport is used in the management of remember you are transporting a bone you are transporting a bone where it is done whether it is gap non union deformity correction comminuted fracture femur avascular so you are transporting the bone means definitely it is a gap non union it is a terminology used in elizoro please remember elizoro if there is a fracture like this and if you if you bring closer the limb will be short but i want to maintain the limb length but fracture to unite they have to be close to each other so how will i do what you do you cut the bone here normal bone and you slowly transport this slowly you bring the bone here and close so there will be a gap here but this fracture comes and unites so you, you are creating a gap in a normal bone and you are slowly every day you are distracting means there is a callus formation here slowly if there is a distracted and once the bone is approximate the fracture approximate fracture also will heal and this also will consolidate it is a principle of elizaro yes please remember this is a gap there is a gap here this is a normal bone so what they have do you will apply pins here and slowly you distract this artificially created fracture and slowly it comes and approximate the fracture unites here here a new bone regeneration is seen that is a distraction osteogenesis please remember it is distraction osteogenesis so this becomes bone consolidated so nicely 
So the the newborn is formed in the artificially fracture and original fracture. So the length is maintained. The limb length is maintained, isn't it? And the fracture is also united. Contraindication for internal fixation. So generally we do internal fixation in orthopedics. So what are the contraindication? Please remember. Active infection certainly because you you are putting a rod means it is a foreign body. It is contraindication. Fracture dislocation. Yes, you have to fix it with the internal fixation. Intraarticular fracture if it is displaced you have to fix it. Partial injury in children you have to fix it. So what is the contraindication? Active infection. Don't put uh, any implants or internal fixation. That is a contraindication. Treatment of choice, please remember, remember this, treatment of choice, lower one-fourth of tibia in non-union, read the question carefully, lower one-fourth of tibia non-union, means it is already late, there is multiple scarred wounds, Matlab skin is, condition is poor, discharging sinus means already there is an infection, and there is a shortening. So many complications are there. So what is the best treatment? Remember, Elizaro fixation is the best treatment. There is no uh, uh, dispute or discussion or debate necessary for this. There are so many complications with the fracture. The only solution is Elizaro. The plate and screw external fixation nailing is for a straightforward fracture with no complications, okay? Surgical excision is contraindicated. Remember, any fracture, for that matter, you have to fix it. But in some fractures, in some fractures, you can do surgical excision. If there is a small piece of the bone, instead of trying to, instead of trying to fix so that fracture will heal, you can excise. There are only some limited places and limited number of fractures. So let us see where you can do surgical excision. Olecranon process, patella, head of radius, lateral condom. Remember one by one will go. So patella fracture, if it is comminuted, you do excision, you can excise. Patella fracture, you can excise. Similarly, the head of radius, if it is comminuted, you can excise. Olecranon process, if there is a very small piece, you can excise. But certainly, you cannot excise the lateral condyle humerus because there is a growing bone you, and elbow will become unstable. So, surgical contraindication is lateral condyle of humerus fracture, you cannot do excision. Which of the following is ideal site for harvesting of the bone? Okay, so will not. Mm, detailed answer. Iliac crest is the class one. It is the best best place for ex, uh, harvesting a bone. Autograft, you can get as much bone available in the body from iliac crest. It can be cancellous, it can be cortical, or it can be cortico cancellous. If you want only cortical Cortical bone, you can use fibula. You want only cancellous bone, you can use a distal end humerus or distal end femur. You want cortico cancellous, the iliac crest is best. Iliac crest, and you can harvest as much bone as required to fill the void or fill the non union gap. Yes, this picture I wanted to just explain. You remove a piece of bone like this. Entire this much of humerus you can, I'm sorry, the pelvis you can remove. You always spare a anterior superior leg spine. Of course, our professor used to make a joke so that your pant is still holding to the waist. That is not the reason. The ASIS is vital for attachment of the ligament, especially ileoinguinal ligament. You have to spare the ASIS. Of course, this is a diagram for the fibula harvesting. Commonest indication for ankle arthrodesis, please remember, it is a post-traumatic arthritis. 
these are all indication for uh, arthrodesis post traumatic especially comminuted talus fracture is a commonest indication for arth uh, uh, arthrodesis most common cause for amputation some words about the amputation some words about the amputation in india most common cause for amputation in india is diabetic gangrene if there is a diabetic gangrene use that word otherwise vascular causes vascular cause is the most common indication for amputation this is very important patient comes to you with the injury of the upper limb doctor is concerned about gangrene and sepsis so i have to decide you get a very bad upper limb injury i have to decide whether to do amputation or save the limb save or salvage salvage the limb or do the amputation i have to decide if you save the limb and he undergoes multiple operation and limb becomes just hanging yeah, anatomical limb is there which is functionless physiologically it is not doing any function it becomes a rudimentary limb then it is waste you don't have to save such limb because in salvage in such limbs it is economic burden for the patient attenders and it is useless a good amputation with the prosthesis is always better so how do you decide in the casualty whether you are doing going to go ahead with the amputation or salvage of the limb see please remember mess is mess mangled extremity severity score extremity either it is upper limb or lower limb mangled really very badly injured mangled extremity severity score gcs is glasgow coma score gastella anderson is for open fracture tibia open fractures classification asia guidelines is not connected so it is definitely not compound fracture can be always saved gcs has nothing to do with the limb salvage so what is the answer answer is mangled extremity severity score there is a scoring system like gcs for head injury where you can decide whether to save the limb or amputate the limb i'll come to that later about the mess so sach foot sach foot is sach foot you please remember what is sach foot sach foot is a artificial foot everything is true about a sach foot except okay solid ankle cushion heel it is a prosthesis squatting is easy doesn't look normal foot okay so for that you should know what is sach foot sach is solid solid ankle cushion heel so this is correct it is a solid ankle cushion heel sach means solid ankle cushion heel that is correct all are true except is there so it is a prosthesis definitely it is a prosthesis squatting is easy you don't know doesn't look similar to the normal foot yes it doesn't look definitely normal to the foot so if the if it is a solid ankle means just squat wherever you are and see if your ankle doesn't move squatting is not possible isn't it so solid ankle means there is no ankle movement hence squatting is not easy squatting is difficult so what is true all are true squatting is difficult it is not easy in sach foot remember that okay some pictures i wanted to give very very important please remember this jaipur foot sach foot madras foot see sach foot is what was invented or designed at the beginning it is used in europeans 
here the, if the toes and other things are not designed you have to wear shoe normally which is not suitable for our indian population and one more problem is sach is solid ankle means there is no ankle movement so this is was later modified by ct dr ct please remember his name is a renowned orthopedic surgeon dr ct designed jaipur foot wherein you will get movements at the ankle and the patient can walk on the uneven ground he need not wear a footwear foot looks similar to the normal foot so that is the beauty of jaipur foot madras foot is further modified uh, jaipur foot so most commonly we are using jaipur foot in indian scenario okay some uh, internal details let us not bother i wanted to explain but anyway this is what how your jaipur foot looks there are nicely designed toes also the patient can walk barefoot here in sach foot they have to wear a shoes on this so that nobody will come to know whether it is artificial limb this is a design will not go into that okay few more questions before i wind up ring sequestrum ring sequestrum there are different type of sequestrum i will uh, i have explained in the chapter of infections but this sequestrum ring sequestrum is typical of certain site that's why i picked up this mcq it is seen in amputation stump the end bone is there soft tissue is covered if you do lot of stripping if the periosteum is stripped a lot of periosteum is stripped from the tibia the end bone is avascular this becomes like a ring so ring sequestrum is seen in amputation stump yeah also another site for this is a ring sequestrum this is only to show this is not amputation stump please remember it is kind of a ring shape here it is seen in external fixator there are pins supplied like this okay if the pin becomes loose there also a ring sequestrum is found so ring sequestrum ring sequestrum is seen in external fixator application and most commonly in the amputation stump please remember that in closed amputation which structure is severe shorter than the level of the amputation bone muscles nerves and skin remember muscles and skin definitely has to be longer than the bone because you have to cover the end of the bone so now you are left with the bone or the nerves so bone level will decide the resection whether it is above knee amputation or below knee amputation so bone will decide the level of the amputation so definitely it is answer is nerve in closed amputation in closed amputation nerve is severed shorter than the level of the amputation very important things before i skip this slide nerve before you are whenever you are doing the amputation you decide the level of by the bone and muscles you divide about 5 cm beyond you divide here and of course skin you have to leave longer but when it comes to resect vessel will be divided at the level of bone again and when it comes to nerve you have to pull the nerve and resect you have to pull and cut that so that means it gets retracted what is the reason is reason is the end of the nerve forms a bulbous swelling it forms a neuroma neuroma end of the nerve which is resected forms a neuroma end neuroma so suppose my amputation stump is like this with the bone here if there is a neuroma from the nerve this neuroma is very 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 painful it is not covered by myelin sheath if it is very close to the end of the stump it is very painful 
and you cannot fit up processes. Hence, nerve has to be resected higher up. Okay, this is a, a Hold on, uh, there is some uh, internet problem. Uh, he'll come back huh? in a second. Huh? So I'll be back. There is some internet disconnection. He'll be back. Huh? Vandana, you are from which college? Sir, Kim's. Kim's Rubli. You are in which year? No, no, no. Uh, Bangalore, sir. Oh, Kim's, sir. You are in which year now? There? Final year, sir. Final year, yeah. So anybody anybody else from Kim's has come? Yes, yes sir. sir. Bobby, yes. Bobby, yes. Yeah. You are also final year? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. What about uh, uh, Monesh? So he'll be back in a second. There is some discussion. He'll come back. Hmm? Akash. Hello. Illa. I'm here. Bandilani, you're not in. Illa. Ian would like a carry with yellow hair. Now, they will work out there now. Inga. One good thing. I'm going to refresh my life. I'm going to get there.
Hello? Bhavya? Vandana? Yes, sir. Yes. So you are studying in the final year in Kim, sir? Huh? Yes, sir. So that means, sir, when will be appearing for exams? Huh? Suppose it will be this December, sir, but we don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is the biggest problem, na? December yes, there will be exams and uh, nobody knows what is going to happen. So what about all your clinical postings are gone? Yes, sir. We attended only one month posting, sir. After that. Yeah, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. January only one. Afterwards, sir, February almost like uh, yeah, March only. Yeah, it was started, yes, na? So what is the, they are going to extend one year for you people or uh, you'll have to, you'll have to go for exams, you don't know about that. No, I don't know, sir. When they are going to start the college according to that? What the that information is, there? That huh? also we don't know, sir. You don't know that also? But college is not informed anything. Yeah. yeah. Right now, where are you, in Bangalore or both of you are in somewhere else? I'm about. in Bangalore, sir. Bangalore are you? Bangalore, huh? sir. Ballari, yeah, from Ballari. Now you can pass that link to your other friends, so let them also join. Hmm? Okay. Eh? Eh? So that means um, mm, we'll be adding more subjects, many people will be joining. Hello? Yes, uh, students? Hmm? Yes, students? Yes, sir. Uh, he said uh, there was nothing much. After this, there was one slide only. Uh, some net problem is there. And he will continue from that slide next class. Okay, nothing to worry. Huh? Oh, okay, sir. Okay? Okay, uh, fine. thank you, sir. Good night. You study well and uh, inform most of us to join. Huh? Okay. Right. Thank you.